Greetings, my name is Marina Schapelsky. I'm an immigration attorney since 2002, and I'm here to talk about starting a new business for new immigrants. What are some good ideas how you should map your plan of action? What are some good business ideas and how you should proceed? First of all, to start a new business, it's always a good idea to register your corporation or limited liability company as a corporate entity in the state where you plan to practice. So if you're going to live in the state of Washington, you should do this in the state of Washington. Of course, some bigger corporations register in the state of Delaware because there's low taxation there, but it doesn't make sense to register in Delaware if you never do any business there. So the first step is to register your corporation. Even if you don't have a social yet, you're waiting for your work permit, there are ways to register your company even before you have your own social. You can get an ITIN registered, your individual taxpayer number, or get a family member or a friend set up the company for you initially as the incorporator and then just sell it or sign it to you for a dollar. So then it's yours. Okay, what are some good business ideas for new immigrants? When you just come here and you don't yet know, uh, you know, any professional services or anything like that that requires a professional license, many people begin with a food business. A food business could be a coffee shop where you will serve just coffee and maybe some rolls and some pastries. Usually you rent a small place or even maybe can sub-rent or sub-lease from someone else that's running a bigger venue to save on cost. Some people will start some casual food place like a small diner or any ethnic food diner and you don't need to necessarily start with fine dining like a six-course French restaurant. That's probably not a good idea to begin with. But something casual, simple meals, limited menu is very doable and you can work on your own hours to make it easier for you to like pick up kids from school or do anything else that you might be doing. You might even be able to, ha to have a job, a full-time job and have your own business. Uh, now, casual fast food restaurants like Chinese food tacos work really good. Uh, franchises. They're sometimes more expensive, but they're always established. People know the name. It's guaranteed clients in the door. So franchises and franchise restaurants are expensive, but they're a good idea if you have the funds and you're new. Food trucks. So there are trucks where you basically cook inside the truck and sell the food outside of the window of the truck are also a great idea. In New York, we have so many of them and make sure you understand if there's any local permits or any local rules about parking in specific places and selling there. We don't want you violating anything, um, you know, of your local rules and ordinances, but it's not that hard to find out and uh, find out about the rules concerning food trucks in your town. Street stands, something like selling hot dogs or mobile cart is also a good idea. They usually work with one or two employees. And again, they have a very small menu of things that they sell. Maybe it's like a hot dog or a sausage and a bun, ketchup, mayo, uh, mustard. That could be it and water and soda. And it's, you know, the, the fees to buy one and establish ones are pretty low. They're usually not expensive. Sometimes you can even rent them. And it is a steady business because people like those uh, food trucks, especially uh, street stand trucks, especially if they're on the run. Now, whenever you're selling food, most food service businesses require licensing and permits. Make sure you're running this legally. If you're small, uh, if you're a small business owner, I highly recommend you join your town, <clears throat> your town's small business association or business association and attend their meetings on a regular basis. You would be surprised how much great help and information you can get from the people in your town, in your community. Not only they will give you information about licensing, what's allowed, what's not allowed, give you good ideas. They might even support your business and become clients and consumers. 
So make sure to join your local business association or even the small business association. Now, liquor licensing. If you have a business that sells liquor, beer, wine, and other liquor, you will probably need separate licenses for that, and they're expensive. So please make sure that you probably will need an attorney or a professional for those licenses. Construction is also not a very difficult area for new people to get into. Moving, moving trucks, sometimes I've seen in my town in New Jersey, people offer their services with a small truck for moving sofas or tables or anything that people buy from estate sales, for family, for friends. I'm not talking about full blown moves. I'm talking about just moving a couple of items. I've seen people get junk removal trucks and be very successful with that. You could probably buy a used truck that does um, the job, you know, that you can use for removing garbage, junk removal from your community. Now, service business ideas, handyman. A handyman is somebody who takes care of small chores that many people don't have the time and the ability to do. For example, hanging up pictures, moving shelves, putting a shelf together, putting a table together from Ikea or like a furniture store. Uh, painting a small space, uh, hanging up, uh, like sometimes there's those sliding doors, anything like that. Handymen are always busy. Somebody who helps with small plumbing, small electric or painting jobs is always in demand. If you are a fitness person from your country, you can become a fitness trainer. Sometimes you need a license for that or a certificate too. But again, those are not difficult to get and you can be a fitness trainer, a personal trainer. You could work from home if you set up a home gym, maybe like in the garage, or you can go to people's houses and train them at home or join a gym and work at a gym. There's always several gyms in uh, almost every location. Dog grooming is a big one. House cleaner, men and women uh, go and clean houses and offices. And it's, it's not uh, bad money, but it is hard work. Uh, remember, you might need additional animal and plant transport permits for various things that are related to farming. So keep that in mind. And if you get a special non-commercial driver's license for transporting yourself and passengers in vehicles that weigh up to 26,000 pounds or a commercial license for driving a truck, you can either work as a taxi driver or like a bus driver, or you could drive a truck. Those jobs are really well paid in the United States, but require you to take a special driving license test and other requirements so that you are considered a good candidate to drive a truck, whether it's for a day trip or for a week or more trip when people need help transporting large shipments across the United States. I hope this video was helpful to you and interesting. If you like it, please share it with your friends. Please give us a like and become a follower of our channel. Please also find us on TikTok and on Facebook. And we have a Russian speaking channel for people who don't speak great English, but they do speak Russian. And it's called Saviete Advocata Marine Shapirskai. Thank you and have a great day. Bye bye.